So my buddy Otis brought over his Gunner Rock Tour Adventure 2 for one of the live streams. And then when he left, he was like, hey, hang on to it and ride it for a little bit and let me know what you think. So I actually finally got a decent ride on it this weekend where we hit all the surfaces, the gravel, the dirt, um, some pavement, whatever, every kind of uh, surface you could imagine. So I now kind of have a really uh, good vibe of how this bike rides. He had brought it over originally in the winter and he had it set up completely different. Um, and I'll get into all of that in a bit. Anyways, Gunners are a brand that are made by Waterford Precision Cycles in Wisconsin. And that's a really interesting story with that whole company that I think I'll do a super deep dive into in a different video. But basically, Gunner is their brand that is um, air hardened tubing, TIG welded, and then they come in stock sizes and colors, which make it that you could get an American made frame hand built fairly affordably. And so that's kind of the interesting thing about Gunner. You could still get them fully customized geometry and customized paint jobs, but then the cost goes way up and you're getting into, you know, Waterford territory there. Anyways, so I'll run through what this build is, but the interesting thing is really the way he has this bike set up. So like I said, it's the Gunner, the Rock Tour Adventure 2. He has 700C whiskey carbon wheels on there, 55 millimeter Rene Ayers Fleecer Ridge tires, which Rene Ayers makes the best tires, so that's awesome. Thompson setback seat post, SRAM GX electronic shifting, I believe. I know it's electronic and it says GX on it, but I'm not a SRAM guy, so I don't know where that falls or if that's how you call their stuff. <laughs> um, he has a mid fork mount, uh, Nitto basket and rack on there, which is great as well. Anyways, so the interesting thing is more in the front end of the bike, which makes it unique. When he brought it over last winter, he had in a more typical drop bar setup, and I could not get a handle on the, well, handling. It just felt really strange to me, and uh, I only got to ride it on a couple road rides, basically running some errands, and then all the snow fell, and he took it back, and I kind of said, you know, I was really actually kind of uncomfortable. He rode it a few more times. He was kind of saying I wasn't as used to the wide tires on a drop bar bike, but then he was even saying, yeah, the setup wasn't just quite dialed or right then. Now he's put a Happy Stem on there by Velo Orange. And these, I don't know what brand they are, but they're these carbon um, mustache bars. So the front is higher than any bike I've ever ridden. It's actually closer to the way I have my single speed set up now, which was for like an upright city bike Dutch kind of style. But I really like these um, mustache bars because they put your hands almost sideways, more like, you know, if you were had your hands on hoods. And that's just kind of a comfortable position for me. So as we got out riding and off road, it was like really interesting to be in like a more really comfortable upright position, but on a super capable gravel bike. Uh, you know, you could hit anything and it just felt great. Then with the way these are mustache bars, it's really easy to reach forward to that front bend and then rest your forearms on the rest of the bars. So when you want to get going, fast or say you have a headwind, um, it's still like you could still really move on this bike and still get fairly low. And the bike, I was actually getting it moving pretty well, just sitting upright, you know, being a lightweight steel frame and just, you know, really nice componentry on there. It just really got me thinking. I'm like, you know, I've always been a drops guy. I have a couple flat bar things or all bar things that are more kind of like novelties or specific bikes. But I was like, man, I really like this. <laughs> I was just, the more I rode it, the more I was happy in this position. The bars being up and back and the sweeps on the mustache bars was just kind of great. And like most of uh, Otis's bikes as a bike shop uh, owner of Dirty River, it's also for sale and it's really tempting. It's kind of got me thinking, do I just want to take one of my bikes and get it set up more like this? Yeah, just had a blast riding it. As you can see, it's like not slowing me down. I'm still like you know, hitting everything and just having fun. And then with the way that I have back issues on and off to not be all the way forward when I have plenty of other bikes that I could do that on was really cool. That's like the main takeaway from this is really, I mean, Gunners are beautiful bikes, um, really nicely made. The really unique thing is the setup he has going on here, which has really got my wheels turning. I'm just thinking of how comfortable it would be to do tours and bike packing on something like this. Um, being able to hit all the surfaces for one, but then being in this position for long days in the saddle, I just think would be amazing. So since I just said saddles, let's, jump into some of the other components and the saddle. He has a Brooks C19 on there. I have a lot of friends who run the C17. He said the C19 is actually width wise more comparable to the Brooks B17s, which I run a ton of. 
I did not like the saddle. Um, it was actually very uncomfortable for me after just a couple miles. I was actually a little sore from it, uh, from riding on it. I'm sure I'd get used to it, but I also have no reason to. I really love Brooks B-17s. I don't wear chamois or any padding when I ride with my leather saddles. So for me, I would stick with the leather. That's one thing about the setup that I would switch out. As already mentioned, I love the tires. Can't go wrong with whiskey carbon wheels. They're great. Thompson seat post, all that stuff. Uh, the, another interesting thing, the SRAM electronic shifting. Obviously really cool. You don't miss a shift. It feels like the indexing is perfect, and I have to imagine it just kind of stays perfect, right? There's no cables to stretch or anything like that. Also, it's great not to have cables and all that. I also, the, the other thing I really liked about it is, even though I'm not an advocate of ever mashing through your gears, no matter what, you know, I did like how if you were late to shift, you know, which happens to all of us sometimes, it still shifts. So under, and I, I bet it would shift under heavy load, but under just even a moderate moderate load, when you don't shift quite quick enough, it's there. Shifts really quickly. I didn't go and download the app yet because I he only has it set to shift one gear at a time, which when you're coming up to a light or you know you're gonna stop or you see the hill coming is no problem. You could shift through them so fast. But I just really love, you know, with Shimano mechanical shifting, how easy it is to go through three or four gears at once. And especially since I'm a two by guy, you could drop down into the smaller ring and shift three or four gears with the other lever when you come to an unexpected hill when you're riding the gnarly stuff and all that. Still one of the things that I like about two buys, so far mechanical shifting, but like I said, I did not try it out in the other modes. I know you could set it in where it'll shift multiple gears at once. Electronic shifting, probably unless I was sponsored or making a lot more money, I don't think it's quite worth the upgrade for me, but I definitely see why people like it and the benefits of it. One buy, I could get by, I could get used to it. If I bought a bike that was already set up one by, um, I've said this before, I would deal with it. I'm still a guy who prefers a two by drivetrain. GRX would be what I'd buy if I was just gonna spend money and get something new. Yeah, that's kind of just, you know, some of the thoughts on riding this bike. It was a blast. You could see the ride we went on was really cool this night. And um, yeah, look into Gunner if, you're, if you are looking for an American made frame. Really cool stuff, made in Wisconsin. They've been doing it forever. It's the legacy of, you know, Schwinn and their American made stuff. So that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one. Looking good. <laughs> yeah, can you maybe do something? Babe, could you